Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam, and in this video, I'm gonna be replacing these Gulfstream Nandinas that have been on the side of my house for about 20 years. This is the west side of my house, and for those of you who don't know Nandinas well, uh, this is a great choice for the west side of my house. Any Nandina would have been a great choice. This side of my house, from noon on, just absolutely cooks uh, over here, and almost any Nandina, old varieties, new varieties, uh, this is something that they can really tolerate and really take and everybody's got this kind of space where you just there's you throw plant after plant at it and things just don't hold up very well so i will say these gulfstream nandinas have done a tremendous job uh, with that when i put these in 20 years ago gulfstream was the latest and the greatest it was there's been an evolution of nandinas over time over my whole lifetime living in the south um, from plants that get suckers at the base and uh, our leggy mess uh, to these. This was the kind of the next generation of Nandinas, uh, which were quite a bit fuller and quite a bit easier to maintain and don't sucker at the base as much. But fast forward 20 years later, and there's a whole new generation of Nandinas. They have something going on all year long, and I wanna show you those and then show you the one that I've picked to replace these with. This is the original, this is Nandina domestica, and you can see in this pot where it has suckered and has four or five different plants in the same pot. Uh, this is kind of typical. This is Gulfstream Nandina. This is the one I've had planted here for a long time. I had tried to keep these smaller, but over time, over about 20 years or so, they've gotten a little woody down at the base and I really can't regenerate any foliage down there. They look good right now. I had pruned them back hard in the spring, really trying to rejuvenate them. And it rejuvenated the top, but the bottom on them is very thin. That's part of the reason I'm taking them out. And there's just newer varieties that do more this is Firepower Nandina, probably the most popular of the Nandinas for the last 20 years or so. This one turns bright red in the wintertime. This plant right here has been babied in a nursery and it looks much, much better in that container than it does in the ground. I've never been drawn to these Firepower Nandinas. It turns like a fire engine red color in the wintertime and it is quite attractive for about three months. The rest of the growing season, this plant to me has never been very attractive in the ground. Here is a new variety called Blush Pink. All season long, it has this pinkish new foliage on it, and it was completely covered in it a few weeks ago. We're in the transition now, it's October, so it's losing that new growth color, and as the growth hardens off, it's starting to get that red tint in it, and this thing will be solid fire engine red in the next few months through the winter, exactly like firepower. But when it wakes back up in the spring and starts putting on new growth again, it will be this pink color all season long. And it's really, really, really very striking. They both get a similar height. Um, I think you can hold either one of them in a foot and a half to two and a half foot range without any problem. The next variety I'm gonna show you is one that gets three to four feet in height. This one's called Lemon Lime. Again, it's a Southern Living Plant Collection variety. Uh, we're toward the end of the growing season again on these. I'm planting them in, in October, so it's lost some of it, but this thing has lime green new foliage the entire season. Super, super industrial, like all Nandinas. Foliage all the way to the bottom, which is a huge improvement. And then we get 12 months of beauty out of it instead of three or four. The one I've actually chosen to go with to replace my Gulfstream Nandinas is this one right here called Obsession. And again, it's just an absolutely perfect full to the base variety. And as you can see on my Gulfstreams right here, in the early spring and throughout the summer on the newest growth, it's kind of got this reddish, um, I don't know how to describe that, reddish pink new growth on it uh, right in here. This one has this incredible red new foliage throughout the entire growing season. And it's extremely striking against this older green foliage throughout the entire growing season, which is really beautiful. Again, we're in October, so I don't have quite as much of that new growth color. They're only gonna get about the height of this air conditioning unit, which is what I wanted out of these in the first place. I'm gonna dig these Gulfstream Nandinas out. Uh, believe it or not, Nandinas actually come out of the ground pretty easy. This, these have been in the ground for 20 years. If this was a holly that was six foot tall, it could take me an hour or two to dig these out. Uh, surprisingly, I can use my trenching shovel, which is a narrow shovel, maybe four or five inches wide. I can go around these one time and pop these out of the ground. After I get these out of the ground, I'm gonna mix some of this pine bark soil conditioner in. I've got clay soils 
If you had sandier soils, you might use a little bit of peat moss, but really, if I was going to tell you there was a plant that you could just dig a hole and throw it in the hole, it's probably Nandinas, so not a whole lot. I did pull back my pine straw mulch here already before I pull these out because I don't want that falling in the hole and getting mixed in, and I'll re-put that back in place afterwards, and I got a bale of pine straw to freshen it up. But you see that? That was, uh, I don't know how long that took. It's not completely out yet, but it won't take long. I don't know why Nandinas are this easy to dig out. I have four of these Obsession Nandinas. Three will go here, one will go there, just like I had before. A lot of times before I start planting plants, I will pull one out of the container, see how root bound it is, see if I actually need to dig the entire depth. Uh, Nandinas aren't aggressive rooting as you just saw from that, but sometimes if they've been in the pot for a really long time. But this one's very lightly rooted right here. You can see it's enough to hold the soil together, but it's certainly not root bound in any way shape or form. It's a perfect root system, but I am going to need to go to about that depth and I can kind of test that with my shovel here and it's about the, the depth of my shovel. So that's where I'm going to go. I don't really need to go any deeper than that. The roots aren't going to end up deeper than 12 inches. They're going to be mostly surface roots. That's true of most everything. People dig really, really deep sometimes, but not necessary. Most plants, the roots that are in the very, very, very bottom of that container are going to be starved of oxygen at the bottom of that hole and they're not going to continue growing they're going to die and then all the new roots are going to form in the top few inches of soil where there's some air so i just dig it to the depth of the pot right there which is happens to be the length of my shovel blade if i use my shovel to determine the spacing i'll just go from the tip of that figure out where the middle of that one is, come over here and the middle, I'm about th three or four inches off from it being centered. So if I move it two inches that way, that'll be perfect. I'm gonna use the pine bark soil conditioner. You'll see me pour that on top of this loose soil. When I use it to replant, it'll mix itself in. It's actually what these plants are grown in is a pine bark fines uh, mix. Uh, works great, drains really well, keep this clay from recompacting. Kind of perfect for that when i'm done when i get all the pine straw down i'll bring the water hose over here and i'll put it at a, on a trickle at the base of each one run it for 20 minutes maybe a little longer and just drown this entire space they're just not going to need a lot of ongoing watering at this point the new growth has really slowed down on it like i showed you so they're just not going to be in that big of demand i'll come back over here in a week or so check it again if they're dry i'll drown the space again uh, but if not I'm gonna walk away and stay away for several days again. Because the biggest threat to these probably is me <laughs> being overly worried about them and overly panicked about them and constantly watering. I'm gonna take these out of the containers and lay them in here and just kind of triple check that they're right where I want them to be before I start putting soil around them. as I pull it around and do that. Again, I want to see the top of this root ball when I'm done here. I'll tamp this down with my foot as I go some. I don't want to cover anything that wasn't covered before. I want to see the black of that soil when I'm completely done. I'm using pine straw, but you could use any kind of hardwood mulch that you want to use, brown mulch, red mulch, black mulch, whatever uh, suits your fancy. You could even use compost as mulch on the top of it if you want to. I'll go through and press this down around the edge of my plants and just clean off the pieces that I got on top. Just tuck it up under here. Nice thing about pine straw is I really don't have to worry about it touching the stems as much as I do hardwood mulch. With hardwood mulch, I would have gone back and made sure it wasn't touching anywhere. This is pretty good. Once I walk this down a little bit and get the water on it, it'll lay flat. This looks fantastic. I'm going to get 20 years out of this without even 
hardly any maintenance whatsoever. I may prune them once every four or five years a little bit because I do want to keep them right around the height of that AC unit. As I do updates on my home landscaping, I will continue to show you these. I'll fertilize these in the late winter, right before they start to put on some new growth and really accentuate the amount of new growth they're gonna have. So you can really see the red color that I'm talking about during the growing season, next spring and summer. These are gonna be quite striking. I've done videos for three of the four Southern Living plant collection Nandina varieties. I'll link those uh, up here and down below so that you can go and take a look at those individual varieties. All of these varieties are just like all Nandinas. They'll grow in zone six to nine. They're all just absolutely tough as nails. If you're a beginner gardener, this is one you can kind of get your feet wet with and not worry too much about uh, having misplanted it, planted it too deep, planted it too high, underwatered it, you know, those kinds of things. You can kind of get away with it on these Nandinas. So maybe a good one to start with if you're just starting to follow my channel and just starting out. So thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see updates on these Obsession Nandinas and all the other landscape projects I have going on in my yard over the next year.